guys, my name is Nako Nakatsuka. I'm a fourth year chemistry PhD student at UCLA, and today I'll be helping you guys out by going over some general chemistry concepts. And good luck with the course. So now let's talk about the D aldose family. And this is the configuration of most natural aldoses. And the L aldoses are generally unimportant, so we don't really talk about them. So as you can see, just by having a different configuration, one can be very important and the other not so much. And so the first one we have are the trioses, where we have D-glyceraldehyde. And some of the more important ones to memorize for this course are boxed right here, since there's a lot of them. But as you do more practices and as you see these molecules more, it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to memorize these different molecules. And so glyceraldehyde, pretty straightforward. When we have aldotetroses with four carbons, now we have two stereocenters, right? And that means we have four stereoisomers. So that means we're going to have two D isomers and two L isomers. And in this case, you're seeing the two D isomers. And so remember that when you have a certain number of stereocenters of n, you can find the number of stereoisomers as 2 to the power of n. And so that's why the more carbons you have, the more different molecules we have, because we have more combinations of stereoisomers that we can talk about. So now when we have five carbons, the aldopentoses, now we have three stereocenters, right? So now if we do 2 to the power of 3, we're going to have 8 stereoisomers. And in this case, you're seeing the 4 that are D. And as you can see, the ones that are boxed that are important are ribose, d arabinose and d xylose And d ribose in particular, is found in RNA. So finally, looking at the aldohexoses with 6 carbons, now we have 4 stereocenters, meaning we have 16 stereoisomers, and since we're just looking at the D, we have eight molecules. And the ones that you want to focus on are D-glucose, D-mannose, and D-galactose. And these guys are going to come up later on when we talk about disaccharides. So now let's look at the ketose family. So looking at the D-ketose family, it's a lot less than the D-aldose family. But that's because they have less stereocenters. And also, the aldose family is the more common one, so there's a lot less ketoses that you'll need to memorize for this course. But let's start out with dihydroxyacetone. So if you look at dihydroxyacetone, it doesn't have a D or L configuration because it doesn't have a stereocenter. If you look at this carbon right here, it's double bonded to an oxygen. Remember we talked about this when we looked at stereochemistry, where if something is double bonded, it exists as a phantom atom. And thus this carbon is going to have two bonds to oxygen, and thus it's not a stereocenter. But now if we have a tetrose with four carbons, now we have one carbon that is a stereocenter, which is this guy right here. And thus this molecule is called D erythrulose, and as you can see, again, the L isomers are not that important, so we're just looking at the D isomers. So now if we have the five carbons, we have D ribulose and D zulose. And now since we have two stereocenters, we have four possible isomers, and we're looking at the two that are D. Again, the ones that are boxed are ones that you should pay extra attention to and make sure that you memorize in case you need to know it for your particular course. For six carbons, now we have one, two, three stereocenters, meaning that it's two to the power of three, which is eight, and thus we're showing four of the D stereoisomers. In this case, fructose is a very important one, which again will come up later on when we talk about disaccharides. So now we're going to move on to talking about cyclic monosaccharides, while these guys were all considered acyclic monosaccharides. 